बोलिए सतगुरु महाराज की जय सच्चे दरबार की जय थैंक यू एवरीवन फॉर जॉइनिंग अस फॉर टुडे सत्संग इफ वी रिफ्लेक्ट ऑन द लाइव्स ऑफ आवर ग्रैंड पेरेंट्स टू जनरेशंस अगो आई एम श्योर लाइक मोस्ट ऑफ योर ग्रैंड पेरेंट्स माय ग्रैंडफादर वाज अ फार्मर सो ही लेफ्ट अर्ली इन द मॉर्निंग with his lunch in his hand to the fields and throughout the day the only sounds that he heard were of the plow hitting the ground or the sounds of the seeds falling to the ground sounds of god's creation the animals that helped him in the fields at that time there were no sounds of cars or sounds of airplanes going overhead and my grandmother on the other hand the only sounds she heard throughout the day was the sounds she made in the kitchen or the sounds of nature that came in through the open doors and windows or the noises of the kids there was no hum of the refrigerator there was no electricity at that time but looking at our lives today the picture has totally changed has become quite the opposite we are bombarded with sounds throughout the day sounds of all the gadgets in our surroundings we have these gadgets in our hands that connect us to sound all the time if you look at the younger generation they constantly have headphones in the ears and it's not because they're looking for silence it's because they're listening to music as they carry out throughout the day the concept of solitude and silence is very ancient to our generation and very hard to practice as well but solitude is like the same to the mind like sleep is to the body it helps us rest and recharge just like we charge our phones every night being in solitude being in silence helps our minds recharge and i'm sure if given the chance or given the opportunity it might not be the first choice of many individuals today but with the situation of the current pandemic where we're forced into isolation and for those who maybe live alone it is solitude but what we do with this is in our hands nelson mandela was locked away in a solitary cell for 27 years 27 years with not a single soul to talk to but outside his cell was this little piece of land and he converted that piece of land into a beautiful flourishing garden Jawaharlal Nehru when he was locked away in prison he wrote a book called the discovery of india so they used their isolation they used their time in solitude to do something beautiful stop and ask yourself what are you doing in your time of isolation in your time of solitude are you filling that noise 
with conversations on the phone, with TV, with the news? Or are you embracing this time alone? The concept of solitude is not ancient. If we look back in history, Jesus Christ spent so much time in solitude. As soon as he received baptism, he spent 40 days alone. Prophet Muhammad used to go up to the mountains to spend time in solitude. Buddha left and went to spend time alone in order to find himself, in order to be enlightened. This shows us that if we want to grow spiritually, if we want to fulfill the purpose of our lives, then we have to spend time alone. And the truth is, brothers and sisters, think of the times that were most difficult in your lives. Who was with you then? No family, no friends, no one could be there for you then, except for God. When we took birth, going through labor, at that time, only God was with us. And when we are to leave this world, there is only one person that can be with us. So the truth is that when we are alone, we're not truly alone. Our protector, our Lord is with us all the time. The word solitude comes from the Latin word solus, meaning solo. Like we say, a, a solo performance is when someone performs alone. An attitude. Having an attitude of being solo is what solitude is. Once a man heard about a saint up in the mountains that lived alone. So he decided to pay him a visit. He took the trek up the mountain. And when he finally met the saint, he looked around and not seeing a single person. He says to the saint, you must be all alone up here. You must feel very lonely. And the saint says, now that you have come, I feel lonely. So yogis embrace solitude. Humans have given the word solitude a very negative image, a very ne has tied solitude to a very negative emotion. We have scrutinized solitude for a long time and we've tied it to being lonely. We've tied it to uh, people who cannot interact with others socially. But the truth is that even scientists have now confirmed that solitude, when taken upon knowingly, can be very, very therapeutic. There are many, many benefits to solitude. For one, solitude gives clarity. When one sits in silence, when one sits alone to be with God, when one sits in meditation, 
it helps us reflect of where we are, of what our purpose is. If you've ever been to a mall, we usually look at the board. So you first look for the sign, you are here. Then you look for the store you want to go to and figure out the path you want to travel. Meditation serves the same purpose. It helps you recognize where you are today. And what is it that you're trying to achieve, that you are striving for, and then figuring out how you are going to get there. Guru Nanak Dev Ji says, alone, let him meditate in solitude on that which is solitary for his soul. Because one who meditates in so solitude experiences supreme bliss. The second benefit of solitude, that feeling of everlasting happiness that we're continuously striving for, that we're looking for outside of us, in true essence lies within us. The need is just to tap into it. It is in solitude that great things are found. We say that the entire universe exists within this body. Monks always thought of solitude as a place of paradise, a place where the full mystery of God is revealed to you. So when you sit and tap into your soul, the understandings of this universe are revealed to you. Nikola Tesla says, be alone. That is the secret of invention alone. That is where ideas are born. In the book of Psalms, it says, be still and know that I am God. It is in this stillness, it is in this silence, that one connects to their true nature. And the more we practice it, we reserve our energy. Another benefit of solitude. Lord Krishna also says that through isolation, an individual can elevate oneself, can elevate their mind, can befriend the mind because as we sit alone as we sit in meditation we come to recognize our strengths and our weaknesses the wisdom of where we want to expend our energy we won't use it in wasting it in useless conversation or useless things because we will come to understand how valuable this energy is for us. Instead of expending our energy throughout the day, it is those moments of silence that help reserve that energy, that help fill our reservoir. For one who practices solitude, who practices meditation on a daily basis, who practices stillness, they do not feel like they are expended. They do not feel like they do not have energy because that reservoir of their energy is filled. So how do we become okay with this practice? How do we practice solitude? Because if, brothers and sisters, you want to expand your spiritual growth, then you're going to have to embrace the practice of solitude. 
all the revelations that we read about in scriptures all the experiences that saints and sages have gone through it's when they have sat alone contemplating connecting to that lord within start small once a disciple came to ramkrishnan parmahans and when ramkrishnan parmahans asked him to spend time alone he asked guruji how long and ramkrishnan parmahans says one month and the man says oh no 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 that's too long that's too much i can't do that so guru says how about a week and he says even a week that that sounds like a bit much so ramkrishnan parmahans says okay just do a day and the man says a whole day in silence a whole day by myself i don't know if i can do that so ram krishna varmahan says do whatever time you can few minutes 10 minutes 15 minutes few whatever time you can do spend that in solitude so start small a daily practice of spending some time with yourself of sitting in silence and when you start this practice brothers and sisters you will feel very uncomfortable you will feel e- uneasy thoughts will come up that will tell you what are you doing don't waste your time this doesn't feel good get up and leave but i urge you to sit through those feelings and soon you will realize you will feel you will experience this sense of calmness that will come over you and as you continue to practice this time alone will become enjoyable to you it will become something that you crave something that becomes a need for you on a daily basis and slowly expand this time and it doesn't always have to be in one sitting it can be broken up throughout the day this will help you recognize how comfortable you are with yourself and the more you connect with your true nature the more the consciousness will start to expand you will become wiser about how you expend your energy you won't waste it on useless things on useless conversation but you will recognize how powerful how valuable this energy is to you in difficult situations we always say it's a blessing in disguise yes this pandemic has been disheartening but it is a blessing in disguise that stop that rest that we wanted but felt like we did not have time for we've received it now we stigmatize isolation we stigmatize solitude but today i'm asking you to embrace it embrace it and use this time for yourself to grow spiritually use this opportunity to expand your inner self 
Use this time to build your personal relationship with God. On that note, we'll conclude today's discourse. Thank you all for joining. Till next time, stay safe. God bless.